We've seen pro downhill mountain bike racers adding weights to their bikes, but why do they do that? Is it faster? And is it a good idea for normal mountain bikers? Okay, so today we're gonna to put it to the test. I'm on my downhill bike. I've got some weights to add to it. We'll see how much difference that makes in feeling and in time, but specifically in sprung mass. So let's start explaining sprung versus unsprung. Okay, so that shows the unsprung mass more than anything, taking the wheels off, but it's not quite as simple as that. The unsprung mass, most of it is made up by the wheels, the tires, the axles, but also the discs and anything on this swing arm, including the swing arm itself. So the derailleur, uh, the caliper, the swing arm, and the fork lowers are all unsprung mass. The lighter these things are, the better your suspension will work and the more reactive it will be, both being able to compress and rebound easier and quicker without adjusting that suspension at all. That means the rest of the weight of the bike, the frame, the bars, the stem, the saddle, you get it, the rest of the components, and even the rider can be seen as sprung mass. So, my new proof descent carbon downhill bike weighs in at 17.3 kilograms total. The unsprung mass comes in at about 6.5 kilograms. It's not completely accurate. Like I said, most of the weight does come from these and everything bolted to them, but I haven't taken the swing arm off to weigh that, uh, plus the caliper, things like that. So it's a Tiny bit of a guess there, like I said, most of it comes from here. That means that the sprung mass weighs in at about 10.8 kilograms. Okay, so already the sprung mass is much higher than the unsprung mass. So 62% of the bike is sprung. But when you add the rider, 76 kilograms of rider, that then goes up to 93% of sprung mass. So today I'm gonna to follow examples of the pros and I'm gonna get fit. These even say pro fitness. These are weights for your wrist. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm actually gonna use these to strap to my down tube, much like the professionals, we've seen these on quite a few downhill bikes now, where they actually attach lead weights to the bottom of their bike. Uh, probably not as much as one kilogram, each of these is half a kilogram. So I'm gonna go overboard probably with these weights to see just how much difference that makes. You see on the pro bikes, they get the weight as low and as central as possible. And that often means on the main frame, just in front of the bottom bracket, getting that weight low is great for bike handling. Momentum is good for some tracks, for rougher tracks where you're going fast the whole time, but it's not good for starting or stopping. So often you'll see pros take these weights off if the tracks are tighter, they're in the woods, maybe not as fast, maybe not as bumpy. But is more mass always better? Well, I reckon I could put on a kilogram fairly easily, but then I've got to use my muscles to move it around and probably gonna be less fit as well. But one of the advantages you hear about gearbox bikes, not just because you get rid of the derailleur that you can smash off, it's actually you take the weight from the swing arm and you put it onto the middle of the bike, so that's nice, but then it also becomes sprung mass as well. So I've got spank wheels on my downhill bike. I choose them mainly for the aluminium rim because I like the feel of that. I don't want a carbon rim that's harsh and puts that sort of force through my tire. So I've got a Spank 350 Vibro Core rim on the front. That has a 17 mil rim profile, 30 and a half in size, so I get the good shape of my tires. Vibro Core for reducing the vibrations as well. Whereas on the rear, I've got the 359 rim, so that's a 19 mil rim profile on the rear, so deeper rim profile, same width, so I get the same tire profile. And I've got Vittoria tires on here, so the Mazza on the front race tire, dual ply, soft compound, and then the Martello on the rear. I wouldn't go lighter with these tires at all because you need the big dual ply protection for downhill. I could add weight by going for inserts, but I don't like them. So the wheels weigh just over two kilograms, the tires weigh about two and a half kilograms. So there's loads of weight that could be saved here, but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't get the ride characteristics I wanted, plus I would puncture straight away.
Fire up! All right, so the weights are on as low as I can get them. The pros actually use these stick-on lead weights. It kind of look like the ones that you use for wheel balancing on cars. Didn't have those, but these are gonna work just fine, I hope. So settings are all the same, tire pressure, suspension, doesn't seem to have made hardly any difference. So uh, I'm gonna go and put a run in and see if I can compare the feel and the time. All right, to the times. But actually before that, let's get into the sprung uh, masses. So on a normal downhill bike with me, it's 93% is sprung mass. When you add the kilogram weight, that then goes up to 93.1%, so hardly anything in it. Compare that to an e-bike and rider, that's 93.5%. So actually, again, not that much more than just the downhill bike, although it does really feel like it when you're riding it. So did I notice it? It's hard to tell, it's marginal. Maybe in those uh, in that rougher, rocky section, maybe a bit more momentum. I feel like my run two, I did nail a couple sections and, and that kind of plays into times as well. So maybe it's down to me riding, maybe not so much the weights. But the run one time, I'm doing the split at the top, where it's a bit steeper, a bit more technical. That was one minute 50. Run two with the weights was 148. So two seconds faster on the more technical section flatter bottom where it is actually that rocky section as well where it's quite flat split on run one was 111 split two on run two uh, with weights was 110 so that adds up to three seconds faster with the weights on there was it a three second faster run anyway i don't know it's one of those things i kind of said at the start of the video if i was a downhill rider doing loads of runs i think it would make more difference but me being the casual rider around now on a downhill bike I don't do the repeated runs like these pros do. So um, the physics is there. It says it should work better on some tracks. Don't forget, you don't want to start and stop more weight. So on those faster tracks where you're not braking heavily and it's rougher, why not run some weight? Um, and obviously those pro racers that are doing loads of runs, they're looking for every marginal gain. I hate that saying, but you know, they're looking for everything, the suspension, 
they're tire pressures, so why not add some weight on those uh, downhill tracks? Does it help the, the amateurs out, the more casual riders? I guess not, you might as well leave your bike as it is, but I find it super interesting. I'd love to do a bit more experimentation with this, maybe even putting a bit more weight on there. Then I think I probably would have to go up on the pressures on my suspension, but I'm interested to try that out. Uh, leave your comments down below if you think it's worth it and if you think the pros do get advantages from adding weight to their bikes.